Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's piano recital by the NUS Piano Ensemble. My name is Kelvin, and it is such a pleasure to be here with all of you tonight. Tonight's concert will be a fantastic journey, exploring the ingenuity and the idiosyncrasies of composers such as Mozart, Rachmaninoff, and Weber. His favor. Oh, who's that? Those are just some residents that we have at my theater. They're harmless, really, and they had such an interesting element to an evening's concert that I decided to let them be. Shall we proceed with the program proper, Kelvin? Who are you? Oh, with the pleasantries. All right, all right. Mr. Hobbs, at your service. Welcome to my theater. Mr. Hobbs, residence? Are you sure you want me to continue? Y yes, just go on, go on. Right, Mr. Hobbs, I mean you own this place after all. Well, to begin tonight's concert, we have two piano pieces by Karl Maria von Webb, Weber. And you may not have heard of this man, but he was in fact a very popular and famous composer in his day and time. And this was despite the fact that he only started regular music lessons at the age of 10. <laughs> And to think parents nowadays start their children on music lessons at the age of two. <laughs> Let's have our pianists now with two pieces from Weber's Six Pieces.
Uh, that was some lovely playing. <laughs> Next up, we have The Planet's Suite by Gustav Holst. Jupiter, the bringer of jollity. Now, The Planet's Suite was one of Holst's most well-received works. It remains one of the most well-played repertoire in today's concert halls. Our uh, Holst must be feeling pretty pleased with himself that he wrote such a popular work. <laughs> him for his autograph, and he would give them a typed sheet, saying he does not give out autographs. He would be absolutely mad this evening when he finds out that the pianists are featuring Jupiter. But why? It's such a jolly piece, you know, the, the bringer of jollity. He hated happy endings. He said once that in the real world, the end is not happy at all. <laughs> and to think he's such a man with such a jolly piece. Presenting now, Jupiter!
That's me, greatest composer ever. Mozart, really. Death should have taught you some humility. But why should he be humble? Wish that a composer could match his capability to conceive whole works in his head and put it down on paper. 21 station opera compositions, 15 masters, 40 symphonies, God who writes 40 symphonies, 27 piano concertos, 5 violin concertos. There is one other though. Ah, uh, yes, Tabi Mushroom Franz Peter Schubert. His slight build didn't deter him from writing more than 600 songs. He was a nobody. No one except his friends at those Schubertiers gatherings knew of his music. How can he possibly be compared to me? You were sure of Mozart. Schubert was a dear old friend who had a quiet soul of ingenuity. Shush! Let's see here. Good, they are playing Schubert's sonata for piano four hands and Mozart's fantasy in F minor. Would you two be quiet and let the audience judge for themselves?
Do you think they will like it? Like what? My piece. It's the next one, suite number one. Oh, of course. It's definitely better than your first symphony. First symphony? Rachmaninoff's first symphony? What's wrong with it? If there were a conservatory in hell, and if one of its talented students were to compose a symphony like Mr. Rachmaninoff's, then he would have fulfilled his task brilliantly and would delight the inhabitants of hell. To us, this music leaves an evil impression with its broken rhythms, obscurity and vagueness of form, meaningless repetitions of the same short tricks, the nasal sound of the orchestra, the strained crash of the brass, and above all, its sickly, perverse harmonization and quasi melodic outlines, the complete absence of simplicity and naturalness, the complete absence of scenes. The conductor was drunk during the premiere, and that critic Tui... Tui? Yes, yes, he's a Tui. Had a personal feud with Rachmaninoff. The performance met such bad reviews that Rachmaninoff fell into a great deep depression for three years. But if there was something good to come out of this, his most famous work, his second piano concerto was written while Rachmaninoff was recovering from his depression. I hope they will like this suite. Of course they will. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Rachmaninoff. I am certain that they will like your suite. Let us, uh, how would you young uns say it in this time of day, uh, give it up for the pianist playing movement one from suite number one.
Now for something light-hearted, we have Gershwin's, an American in Paris, intended to portray the impression of an American visitor in Paris. Gershwin premiered this piece in New York, 1928, using real Parisian car horns that he brought back from Paris. I wonder if that means we'll be hearing some real car horns today. Let's have our pianist with an American in Paris.
The Granger Museum, located in Melbourne and commissioned by Percy Granger himself, contains a section titled Lust Branch. There, the museum bravely displays the contents of a parcel that Granger had left behind, marked Private Matters Do Not Open Until Ten Years After My Death. The parcel contained a large collection of whips, photographs and writings that point to the composer's great attachment to flagellation and sadomasochism. Music is the art of agony, he said. It derives, after all, from screaming. Now this was a man who at one time earned over 60,000 a week performing. Percy Granger, his own eccentricities threatened to overshadow his musical talents. Tonight, join us to understand this man and the music he wrote. Presenting our guest performers from School of the Arts, playing Green Bushes.
Before anything else, I earnestly entreat you to acquire a graceful and appropriate position when sitting at the pianoforte. The seat which you use must be just so high that the elbows, when hanging down freely, may be slightly less elevated than the upper surface of the keys. And if your feet should not reach the ground, have a dwarf stool or ottoman made of a proper height to place them upon. Equally important is a graceful position and carriage of the head and upper part of the chest. It must neither be stiff nor bent. It is not merely that an awkward position is disagreeable and ridiculous, but it also impedes, if not prevents, the development of a free and elegant style of playing. Now that you are ready, please proceed.
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we honor the passing of one of the most influential composers of our time, Hans Werner Henze, who passed away on 27th October 2012 at the age of 86. Could I have a show of hands in the audience, those who have heard of Hans Werner Henze? Ignorant fools, who cares if we had one point shaken the musical realm? No one. That's who, no one. At one point in time, I went equally with Brahms and Wagner. The great Liszt favored me and allowed me to sit by his side at a performance, all soaking wet from walking 80 kilometers in the rain to his concert. And despite this, no one, no one knows who we were. Joachim Roth. You might be right there, but I am certain that by the end of tonight, everyone in this concert hall will know who you are. Let us take the time now to honor Joachim Raff and the recently departed Hans Werner Hens. Presenting Hens's Divertimenti and Raff's Chacon.
our next composer, Igor Stravinsky, was one of the world's most influential people, according to Time magazine. His ballet Petrushka, about a puppet, made famous the Petrushka chord. Yeah, that. I, I wonder why people like these sounds, you know. Yeah, that, that's him, I Igor Stravinsky. Wait a minute, why, why is he wearing two pairs of glasses? Well, one can hardly read the score and look at things in the distance with the same pair of glasses now, can they? <laughs> well, people are all very strange if you ask me. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, presenting Patrushka, And our pianist is with Patrushka Sell.
Good day, my good sir. Would you care to spend, spare some money? Ten thousand dollars would do nicely. Now, I would believe that it would be rather difficult for you to provide me with this sum, but it will be possible if you wish it. Now, let me see what sort of a person you are. This sort of assistance that you provide me will bring you into very close touch with me, a great man. See, Wagner, your little tactic won't work here. You'll just have to learn to spend what you earn. I'm not made like other people. I must have brilliance and beauty and light. The world owes me what I need. I can't live on a miserable organist pittance like you, Master Bach. Besides being a very egoistic man, Wagner was also extremely anti-Jew. He ranted so much about Jews in his book, Judaism in Music, which was, well, pretty much an attack on Jews and their music. And it was for this reason that Hitler held Wagner's music in such high regard. But despite his shortcomings, Wagner was most definitely a very talented man. Tonight we'll listen to Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries.
Now our next composer is a man whose composition style was vastly different from that of Wagner's. One of the great bees, Johannes Brahms. Now unlike Wagner, Brahms wrote absolute music. Wait a minute, what does that mean? Is it, is it all music absolute? <laughs> Uh, here it is, absolute music is music that does not refer to an explicit scene or story, okay? So, unlike Wagner, Brahms never wrote opera or... Compose, 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 even when you don't have the slightest of ideas. Is that you, Wagner, announcing your dislike for Brahms, eh? Well, tonight let's listen to Brahms' Sonata for Two Piano.
where our last performer of this evening, our last composer is Nikolai Metner. He was a contemporary and a close friend of Rachmaninoff. Yet I've never heard of this guy, Nikolai Metner. But he never wanted to play anyone else's works, the stubborn mule. Yes, can you imagine only watching one channel on your TV all the time? That is precisely why the public got tired of him. He was in fact a great performer. Had he diversified his repertoire, he would have been more popular amongst the concert-going public and brought in more money for his family. But instead, he chose to focus on composing and playing his own works. So he gave up the chance to earn more money. Maybe he wasn't that good a composer or pianist. That's why he wasn't very popular, you know. Preposterous! Let's bring out the pianist playing Russian round dance. Listen to that and tell me if I'm wrong.
Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here with us tonight, making this concert such a rousing success. <laughs> but, but, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Before I bring this concert to a close, there is one person, one integral person, who I must bring out tonight. He has contributed so much to the success of this concert. Mr. Hobbs, get over here, Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs, the audience is waiting. Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs. Wait a minute, what, what's, what is this letter doing here? Before this wretched cancer takes my life, I implore you, O reader, to consider my offer. In the back office, underneath my piano composition, you will find a brown envelope containing the deeds to my concert hall. If you seek a place to expand the arts, this place and my compositions shall be yours, but only if you intend to stay. For what would the residents do if something bad were to happen to this place? Consider this my last will and testament that I give to you, a complete stranger, my entire legacy, in the hopes that you will use it well. And perhaps, even after I breathe my last, perhaps I will have the pleasure of meeting you as well. Yours sincerely, Arthur Hobbs. Gentlemen, round of applause as we bring our pianist back on stage. Go, 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 go. Our guest performers from School of the Arts. <laughs> Patrushka Ballerina Valerie Kuhn. <laughs> and our cyclist Tan Wei Lie. <laughs> Mr. Hobbs over here. And now for our sponsors. We would like to thank our sponsors, Alfred Publishing Brands, Essence of Chicken, and J.A. Prince. And last but not least, special thanks goes to uh, Mr. Ku, to whom the Piano Ensemble is indebted to for his undying guidance and support. Well, once again, the NUS Piano Ensemble. Thank you. 